All right, whole next section on capacitors, and it's not the last time we'll talk about capacitors. We'll get into charging and discharging capacitors and RC circuits a little bit later in the semester and stuff like that. But our definite first introduction to capacitors, the first thing you should know is that a, a capacitor's job is simply to store charge. That's what it does. It stores charge and we can use it to release charge. So in your great classic example of a capacitor, so it's not any kind of normal electric circuit that you think of, but the one we always like pulling out is your defibrillator. So if I look at my defibrillator, if Chris just started coding here because we killed him in one of our examples, and we wanted to bring him back to life, I'd pull out the paddles, right? And those paddles are serving as a capacitor. They're separated in space by a certain distance, depending on how close or far I have them and stuff like that. And I charge it up, I apply a potential across the circuit, and they both end up getting charged, one positive, one negative. And then when I connect them to Chris's chest, that sort of completes the circuit. So, and one's positive, one's negative, and current flows through Chris's chest, hopefully through your heart, causing it to kind of maybe reset and start beating again. So that's the idea. And so notice as if I apply a charge, so in this case, and a current flows through Chris's chest and he's still coding, no heartbeat. Can I just pump him and blast him one more time right away? Why not? I gotta wait for it to recharge. The paddles have to build the charge back up, one on the positive plate, one on the negative plate of that capacitor. And so it doesn't charge instantaneously. What we're gonna deal with now is assuming that it's completely charged, that's where this equation becomes relevant. So it turns out the capacitance, new term, is equal to the amount of charge stored divided by the potential applied across that capacitor. And so in this case, it takes a while to actually reach full capacitance, and depending on the circuit, it might take shorter or longer and stuff like that. But this is once it's fully charged, this is when this equation would apply. Cool, and so a ca capacitor has a certain capacitance associated with it. We measure that in farads. So, and the farad just has the symbol F, just like Coulombs has the symbol C. But if you notice, what would a farad be then? A coulomb per volt, and if you recall, what was a volt? A joule per coulomb, and so then it might be a coulomb squared per joule, or you know, different ways to think, but farad. And keep in mind, as long as we use SI units, everything always works out in SI units. And we can derive all those units if we have to, but I like just having faith and knowing that if I use SI units, things work out. So, but it comes out to farads here. And so if you have a certain capacitor that'll achieve a certain capacitance, if I use a higher and higher and higher voltage, what happens to the amount of charge stored? Well, notice, let's just say this has a certain value C. If I make V bigger and Q didn't change, then what would happen to C? It would go down, but C is fixed for that capacitor. So if I make V bigger, it means the amount of charge that gets stored gets bigger as well. If I double the potential across the capacitor, it doubles the amount of charge that we get stored. So that's kind of how this equation works. So the amount of charge stored is proportional to the voltage or, again, a bad word, potential applied across that capacitor. So the way a capacitor often works We often diagram out what's called a parallel plate capacitor. We often use square plates, and in principle don't have to be square. So, but we hook them up in a circuit, and in the middle of that circuit, we'll put a power source here, like a battery. So, and that'll apply a potential across these. We'll start getting the buildup of charge here. And so in this case, we kind of, you'll learn this next chapter, but we kind of envision the flow of positive charge from the more positive side of the battery. So the, the big line is positive, the small line's negative. And even though what's really flowing in a battery? Electrons. Electrons, which are negatively charged. Well, we didn't know that back in the day, and we just said, well, whether it's positive or negative, I don't know what's flowing. Is it positive charges this way or negative charges this way? The result's the same. So we didn't know, we guessed wrong. We said positive, and now we teach you that conventional current is the flow of imaginary positive charges. Even though, so we're gonna pretend that positive charges flow this way, even though the truth is negative charges flow this way. But the result would be the same. And so as positive charges flow here, you're gonna get a buildup of charge, positive charge, on this plate. So gonna flow this way, yep. 
And as the positive charges build up on this plate, well, if this one's neutral, and if positive charges can flow, then how do the positive charges that are on this plate feel about that buildup right there? They're repelled, and they're going to leave. And if the positive charges leave, what charge will be left on this plate? Negative. And so as the charges build up, so it gets harder and harder to build up greater charge, and it slows down and eventually reaches the maximum. And that maximum is Q. And so the Q here represents either the total positive charge on this plate or the total negative on this plate. They have the same charge, just one's positive, one's negative. So don't like add these together or something like that. Whether you make show all the positive on one plate or all the negative on one plate, that's Q. All right. Cool, your parallel plate capacitor depends on a couple of things. So one, the bigger the plates, then the more charge they can store. So, and then also, the closer the plates are, the more charge you can store. So think of the absurd example. What if I put one of these plates in China and one in Africa? Do you think I'm gonna get any buildup of charge? No, but when they're really close, you get a buildup of charge. And so it turns out with this parallel plate capacitor, your capacitance relates to epsilon naught. It's proportional to the area of the plates, but inversely proportional to the distance of separation. So that's your parallel plate capacitor. Turns out we said this would come back uh, into play again, but for your parallel plate capacitor, it turns out we're gonna have an electric field that is everywhere the same. It is a constant uniform electric field everywhere inside. The only place it's gonna deviate from that is at the edges, and we just kind of ignore that. So, but everywhere in the interior, the electric field is everywhere the same, pointing from the positive plate to the negative plate. Cool, and so if you know the voltage applied and the distance of separation, you can figure out what that electric field would be. Or if you know the electric field and distance, you'd know what voltage was applied across and vice versa. So I give you any two of these three, you can solve for the third one. Cool. Turns out you can also take this parallel plate capacitor and I can fill this empty space with what we call a dielectric. And typically what that does is it changes, so the charge buildup and typically it amplifies it. And so in such a case, so we still have this as kind of the baseline capacitance, but we're gonna amplify it by a dielectric constant. And that dielectric constant is the Greek letter kappa. And it's different for different materials I might fill this space with. I might fill it with a plastic or you know, a glass or you know, a liquid or depending on, and all those have different dielectric constants, but these are typically values greater than one. And so by putting it in there, I get a capacitance that's bigger than my original capacitance with just empty space in there. Cool. So sometimes we say that C prime equals kappa times the original capacitance with no dielectric. Same difference. We'll call this then C prime, I guess, in that case, if we use that kind of terminology. So here's your baseline capacitance with no dielectric, multiplied by the dielectric constant, and now you get the new capacitance with that dielectric in place. Cool. So the whole point of these capacitors is to store charge. We can get them to release their charge, like with the defibrillator and stuff like that, but they store charge, and when they store charge, there's a buildup of potential energy. So anytime you get like charges together, that's an increase in potential energy. And the amount of potential energy we're storing here, there's your equation, one half CV squared. I can write this a little different because I can write C as Q over V and it substitute it in and things of that sort, but this is the one I like. So one, I have the easiest time remembering because it looks similar to one half mv squared of kinetic energy. Well, this is potential energy, and this is not velocity, it's potential, you know, and things of that sort, but another type of potential energy, potential energy stored in a parallel plate capacitor. Well, let's have some fun with these. So if we look at number four, When a parallel plate capacitor is fully charged in a circuit with a 12 volt battery, there are one times 10 to the 12th, i.e. a trillion, excess electrons on one of the two plates. What is the capacitance of the capacitor and how much potential energy is stored in the capacitor? So in this case, if I wanna know what the capacitance is, we're going with the straight up definition of capacitance, Q over V. Which one was given to us directly? V, and what was the volts? 12 volts. Now the Q wasn't given directly, but what were we told that's gonna allow us to figure it out? 
Yeah, we know the charge of an electron and we know how many electrons in excess were on the one plate. So if it's 1.0 times 10 to the 12th electrons, and what's the charge on a single electron? Good. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, then that would be the total charge built up on the capacitor divided by the potential. And can somebody get me a capacitance there? What are the units on that? Ah, awesome. farads. So, and sometimes because these can often be pretty small, just like coulombs can be pretty small, sometimes if you get a multiple choice test, I might not give these in farads. I might give these in nanofarads or microfarads or something like that. So instead you might see this as like 13.4 nanofarads or something. I'm just gonna leave it as farads, I like it. And now that I know that, I can plug it into my formula for potential energy and figure out how much potential energy is being stored on that capacitor. And can somebody get me a value for that? Nine point six one times ten to the negative seven. And what are the units on that? Great. Nine point six one times ten minus seven joules. Fantastic. Question number five is a little more conceptual question, not much of a calculation. Uh, it says the lengths of the sides of each of the plates of a square parallel plate capacitor are doubled, and so is the distance of separation between the two plates. What is the effect on its capacitance? So if you recall for a parallel plate capacitor, there's our equation. So what do I do to the distance of separation? Let's evaluate that first. I doubled it. What does that do to the capacitance? Makes it half. Good. What did I do to the area? No. What did I double? I doubled the length of each side. So notice if I got a square pillow plate capacitor and I doubled the length of this side and the length of this side, then what have I really done to the area? Quadrupled it. Good. So now we've realized that I've quadrupled the area and doubled the distance of separation. What have I really done to the capacitance here for this capacitor? I've doubled it overall, good. So like I said, just totally a conceptual question. Just realize it's area here, not just necessarily the length of sides or something like that on the... So overall, we doubled the capacitance. I quadrupled the area, I doubled the distance. So overall net doubling of the capacitance.